Hi, fourth grade. Today I am going to read part of chapter 19. Chapter 19 is the longest chapter and it is the last chapter in Bud Not Buddy. Uh, so I will only read probably four pages in chapter 19 and then we'll read uh, four more later in another video. It's a pretty long chapter and a lot of things happen. So where we left off last time is uh, Bud and Hermione Calloway both had rocks that had dates on them. And they think, the band members think that um, Herman is Bud's grandpa. So we're going to find out and see. Chapter 19. Man, ever since he heard me call my mama's name, Hermione Calloway had locked himself up in his room and wouldn't come out. Mr. Jimmy and Miss Thomas made me sit at the kitchen table while they knocked on his door and tried to talk to him into opening it up, but the way they kept saying, Herman, soft at first, and then louder and louder, it sounded like he wasn't going to talk back. After the longest while, they decided to let the big baby have his own way and come back downstairs. They sat at the kitchen table with me. Miss Thomas looked at me and said, my, 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 Mr. Jimmy said, now look here, bud. He wiped his hand over his face. You're sure your mama's name is Angela Janet? I said, yes, sir. And the two of you both had the same last name. Her last name was Codwell, too. She never said nothing about being no Calloway. I spelt it out for him. No, sir. Her name is Codwell. C A L. D-W-E-L-L. -L. It seemed like he finally believed me. He said, okay, okay. I hope you don't mind me asking, bud, but it's pretty important that we know. How'd your mama pass and how long ago was it? Pass was just like gone. It was another one of those words grown folks use instead of the word dead. I said, I was six years old when it happened, sir. I don't know why. She was too sick to go to work for six days in a row, and then one morning I went into her room, and she was dead. But she didn't suffer or nothing. It happened real quick. She didn't even have time to close her eyes. She didn't look like it hurt or nothing. Miss Thomas reached across the table and touched my arm. She said, I'm sure it didn't, bud. I'm sure it was very peaceful for her. Mr. Jimmy said, was she... When was she living, bud? God rest her soul. What'd your mama look like? This was another strange question, but before I could answer, Miss Thomas said, James, what are you what are you doing? What are you insinuating? I knew there was something familiar about this boy. I don't know how I missed it before, but look at Bud's eyes. You have to ask. If this is Herman's grandchild, Mr. Jimmy said. Now hold on, Grace. I'm just trying to ask questions. I know Herman. Ask if he could. Ain't a thing wrong with being certain before we jump to any conclusions. Now, what'd she look like, son? I said, she was real pretty, sir, Mr. Jimmy said. I bet she was, bud, but that ain't what I meant. Was she short or tall? Was she slim or big boned? I said, I don't know, sir. She was really pretty, real tall, kind of skinny like me, I guess. Miss Thomas said, James, Bud was six years old. Everyone on earth was real tall to him. I don't see the point in all of this. I said, pardon me, ma'am. I know how I can show you what she looks like. I still got her picture. They just stared at me. I said, can I be excused? Miss Thomas said, yes, son. Hurry up and go get that picture. I busted up the stairs, but stop like a brick, like, like I hit a brick wall. I remember... How mad and crazy Hermione Calway looked when he yelled at me. I tiptoed up the rest of the steps. Uh-oh, Hermione Calway's door was open up it was open up to a crack. I held my breath and I tiptoed extra quiet and extra fast right into the little dead girl's room and as soon as I did, whoop sloop zoop, my heart jumped into my stomach. Hermione Calway was sitting on the little chair in front of the little mirror of the dressing table. His, his elbows were on the table and his face was covered in his hands. 
It sounded like he was having trouble breathing because every time he sucked in a bunch of air, he made a sound like, ah, and every time he blew air out, it sounded like, ah, I don't know what to do. I could tell Mr. C didn't know I was in the room with him, so I could probably just backwards tiptoe and get out with anyone ever knowing anything happened. I rose up on my toes. I took two baby steps backwards and I stopped. Shucks, I'd come up here to show Miss Thomas and Mr. Jimmy what Mama looked like. There wasn't nothing wrong with that. I wasn't doing nothing that meant I had to sneak out of this room on my tiptoes going backwards. I sucked in a mouthful of air and I walked over to my bed. I picked up my sax case. I set it on top of the bed. I pushed the two silver buttons on the side and the two silver tongues jumped open and made those loud click click no sounds. Hermony Calway still didn't take his face out of his hands. He kept going with a <laughs> I reached inside my sex case and I took out the envelope with Mama's picture in it. I closed the two silver tongues again and I could tell Mr. C wasn't paying me no mind at all. He kept his face in his hands and his head was rocking up and down real slow, sort of like he was checking to see how much it weighed. I put my sax case back next to the bed and was about to leave the room when I looked over at Herman E. Calway's back. He still didn't know I was in the room with him. I looked in the little round mirror and still couldn't see his face, but I could see his hands a lot better. I could see six little trails of water coming out where his fingers joined with his hands and three little trails from each hand joined together on his wrists and ran down his arms, pounding on top of the dressing, wood, dressing table. Shucks, Hermione Calloway was bawling his eyes out. He was acting like me being his grandson was the worst news anyone could ever give you in your life. This was number 39 of Bud Calway's Rules and Things to Have a Funner Life and Make a Better Liar Out of Yourself. Here it says, Rules and Things number 39. The older you get, the worse something has to be to make you cry. With babies, it's easy not to pay no mind because crying's just like talking for a baby. A baby's tears might mean, hey, you just stuck a pin in my behind when you changed my diaper. Or their crying might be the way they picked out, so to say, good morning, mama, what are we going to do today? That makes it easy not to care when babies cry. When you're an old person and you're crying, you got a whole nother story. When you got someone as old as Herman E. Calway crying, you better look around because you know you're square in the middle of one of those boiling tragedies. You can't help but feel sorry for him. Even if he's been mean to you from the minute he first laid eyes on you, even if he's crying because he found out the two of you were kin. I walked over to Hermione Calway, and before I could think, my hand moved towards his back, and I waited, uh, I waited for one of those spaces between the huh and the huh, and then I touched him. His skin under his shirt was very, very warm. It took a second for Hermione Calway to know someone was even touching his back. When I knew, I felt his skin jerk and twitch the same way a horse does when a fly lands on it and he whipped his head around. When he saw it was me, he jerked away, took one giant <gasps> and then started, his mouth started moving like he was talking in a secret language that only dogs could hear. At last, real American words started coming out of his mouth. He said, I, I, how do, I'm, I'm so, look, buddy, I, I just, it's Bud, sir, not Buddy. He put his face back in his hands and broke down all over again. Man, it's a good thing Thug wasn't around, because if he'd have heard the way Mr. C was weeping, no one would have wondered who the real Waterworks Willie was. I put my hand back on Mr. C's shoulder, and I patted him and rubbed him a couple of times, and then he left the room. It felt a lot better going out frontwards instead of sneaking out backwards. I ran down the steps back into the kitchen. Miss Thomas and Mr. Jimmy's eyes jumped right into my envelope and I set it in the middle of the table. All right, we're gonna stop right there.
right where he is about to show them the picture of his mom. Um, so Herman was crying. All this talk about him being so tough and nothing can faze him. He started crying when he found out that Bud might be his grandpa. So my question for you guys today is, do you think Herman was crying happy tears or do you think he was crying sad tears? Do you think he was crying because he was upset that Bud is his grandson or do you think he was crying because he's happy Bud is his grandson? We don't know yet. We just know he was crying. We don't know why. Bud thinks it's because he's mad that he has a grandson. But it could not be. Maybe he's excited. Maybe he always wanted to meet Bud. We don't know. So um, on Google Classroom, if you want to comment, let me know. Was he crying happy tears? Or do you think he was crying sad or mad tears? Okay. And then next video, we will read a little bit more of chapter 19. All right. Bye.